go ahead and hit record and it started recording. Um, I do need to tell y'all that we're not going to have class Wednesday. So everybody write that down, okay? I have a meeting at nine o'clock on Wednesday morning and we are not going to meet Wednesday. So I need everybody to put your hands up that you heard me say that we're not going to have class Wednesday. I need at least three or four people to say that I, okay, I did say that. Okay, I got two people, three people that heard it good. We're not gonna have class Wednesday. All right. Now, with that being said, you got plenty to work on because some of y'all haven't even started on your homework. I don't know what you're waiting on, but I have a, I have a, I have a, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that 4D and 4E, I think 4C, 4D and 4E, they're going to turn off soon and some of y'all are going to be left without an umbrella. You're waiting until the last minute, but you're not going to have that luxury. I'm going to cut it off before the test. So those five to eight students that are waiting until the last minute, you're not going to have that luxury. All right, now let's go. I think did we leave off at taxable income right here? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Miss Gill. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Just saying, what Miss Gill? Nobody in here would say a word. All right. Now, before we go into the brackets, I need you to write down. You got to write down these four things because if you don't, you're not going to know, and this will be given in the question. And that is, you've got to know whether you're going to be filing single, whether you're going to be filing jointly, or whether you're going to be filing married separately or head of the household. Now, please write down those definitions because it's very important, especially the first two. Okay, usually people do the first two. Um, but that's up to you, and that is what you and your accountant should, you know, discuss what, what's better. And it's usually based on your incomes. Head of household, unmarried, and paying more than half the cost of supporting a dependent child or parent. Now remember, I told you that accounting is usually not because of the math. Accounting is because you don't know the definitions. And in this case, the singled and married filing jointly, this is the different columns in the brackets that you look up, especially for the exemptions and the deductions. I had somebody write me an email after class uh, Friday, you know what they said? They said, I had no idea that people pay so much in taxes. I wish they'd teach this in high school. Are you kidding? They don't, they don't teach this in high school at all. Really? Y'all can't answer a simple yes or no question? No. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, they don't teach us anything. It's all pointless stuff. Oh, it's all pointless. Okay, that's, uh, I don't believe that now. I, I believe that they don't teach you stuff like this because it's better to keep you stupid. I believe that. Um, but as far as, you know, real life stuff, yeah, they don't want you to know anything because they're co probably coaching you for the, what is it now, the SAT or the ACT? Which one is it? It's both of them. It's both, you still, I, I thought, God, oh, you have to take both of them? That sucks. Both exemptions and deductions are subtracted from your adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross means that you take out any expenses or any incomes. You add incomes, you take out any expenses, and that's left with your adjusted gross income. 
And that's what you take the exemptions and deductions off of. That's already calculated unless you keep up with your receipts. Now that's the old way of doing it nowadays. Companies do send you a printout of everything that you've bought. For instance, like I told you the other day, I buy a lot of stuff at Tractor Supply. So at the end of the year, January or the beginning of the year, I get a letter from Tractor Supply and it's got everything I bought the previous year, uh, total amount and what everything I bought. That is what I include with my farm taxes, okay? So that would be deductions. Now, there are standard exemptions and deductions. Most of the time for an individual, most of the time people go with that because it gives you more and you'll see that in just a minute. Okay, exemptions are a fixed amount per person and deductions vary from anything that you, you know, buy for your business or like I told you, if you're a traveling nurse, you can actually count your car off your, your uh, taxes because that technically is your office. This is where you keep up with the actual receipts, an itemized deduction. Okay, here's an example, and you need to write this example down because this is actually a test question. Suppose you have the following deductible expenditures, $45 for interest on a home, mortgage, $900 for contributions to charities, and $250 for your state income taxes. Your filing status entitles you a standard deduction of $63.50. Should you itemize your deductions? Well, add these up and see if these deductions equal that standardized deduction. So 45 plus 1,000 is 35, so that'd be 34, I meant 54. 54 plus 250 is 5650. So that does not equal that. So you want to go with the standard deduction. The standard deduction is what the government says you need to take, or you can keep up with your receipts and you can take off whatever you want to take off. And if it exceeds the 56, I meant the uh, 6350, then you would go with your deductibles. If it doesn't exceed 6350, then you go with the standardized, okay? The standard deduction of 5650, no, you wanna go with 6350, that's supposed to be 6350. You want to go with the standardized if it's more. That's that's incorrect. But we have seen that these slides can be incorrect. So go ahead and write down progressive tax, income tax. This is uh, progressive income tax. I want you to mark through that and put brackets. The brackets are basically a progressive income tax. Marginal tax rates are assigned by brackets. So you might want to write that down and just, I don't know how you put a big, you know, put a big line through this and put brackets because everybody says by what tax bracket you're in. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody compares, you know, well, what tax bracket you in? Well, I'll go to the next bracket you know, or I'll drop down a bracket. That's what everybody talks about, you know, when you're talking about income tax, what bracket you're in. And I think we, I think we jumped all these words and got to the bracket and there's the bracket. And I told you that you might want to write this down or take a picture of it or make an index card out of it. I know 
that 80% of you won't do it because, you know, you just don't want to do it or lazy one of the two. But it would be beneficial if you would take an index card and you can go to the book and pull this out of the book or copy it uh, and print it out and maximize it or, or reduce it or whatever and get it on an index card. Because during the test, it'll be easier for you to do the questions if this is on an index card. Okay. I'm giving everybody a few seconds to write it down or take a picture of it. Uh, actually, let me see if I can find it for you in the book because I know some of y'all won't be able to find it because you have to actually click on two or three buttons. So let me see if I can find it for you. And let's go to Google and pull up 2021. Well, we just paid 2020 taxes. I'm just going to do 2020 tax brackets. And image. And I don't know. Let's see. Let me go back and look. There's tax brackets right there. Now, recently, they, let's say four more rows. There it is. Well, there we go. There are the tax brackets for 2020. And they did streamline it a little bit, not much, but a little bit. So you see there's a little bit of a difference. Priority one message coming in. Instead of 39.6, now it's 37. And it goes down a little bit. But yes, you can go back to the go back to the ebook. A text. Does anybody see it? Does anybody have their book open right now? Nobody's going to say a word. Appreciate it. No, sir. Well, thank you for saying either yes or no. And let's see if I can find it for those people that's going to at least write it down or the page number. Well, they should give it to you right in here somewhere. There it is. So all you want to do is either print this page out, go up here and hit print, print page, or you could go down here and type in SNIP for the snipping tool and just snip it out like this. And then you can make a Word document. Let's go ahead and save that. Save it as tax bracket. And that's under downloads. Pull up your handy dandy Word document. It's a lot of work, I know, a lot of work. Insert pictures and tax bracket is somewhere in here. Where is it? Well, I'm sorry. Downloads. There we go. There it is. That's some hard work, people. And put that on the index card and you'll be ready for the test and you won't have to go look for it on the test. Everybody got that? 
Let's pull up the other tax bracket and let's compare it a little bit. So that way you at least know, there it is, SNP. Where's my snipping tool? I lost it. I hope y'all do learn something in here. At least, you know, make me feel good about myself. I won't never be able to tell because nobody's going to say anything. So, save as tax bracket and we'll save that in the downloads and now let's take that one and put it let's do a landscape y'all know this is a lot of work right yeah hubert it's a lot of work I'm not going to be able to put it side by side, but I'm going to just for giggles and insert tax bracket or picture and we make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And of course you can't see it, but you might want to put it side by side just so you can see a little bit on how it's changed. Um, let's see if I can blow this up. Where is view? Let's go with there we go. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they didn't simplify it by giving us less. They just changed them around and evened them off. Uh, 10, that changed to 12, 22, that went down. So for the middle class, which is 12 and 22 percent. What happened to the middle class tax brackets? That means I want somebody to say something. What happened to the middle class tax brackets? Can y'all not hear me? Can can y'all hear me okay? Of course you ain't gonna sing. Yeah, I hear you. Um it looks like they kind of decreased from they the decreased. Well that golly, it looks like on, on the media and everything they said that taxes increased from 2016 to 2020. Looks like to me they decreased. Let's say 28% here. Now you're getting on above upper middle class. Looks like, let's see, up to 91,900. That'd be this tax bracket right here. It went down. And then when you get up to the people with the yachts and everything, it looks like the people with the yachts, they didn't go up as much. Somebody tell me what kind of argument you could say here. There's two or three arguments you could say looking at 2017 to 2020. What kind of arguments can you say? What can you argue? Y'all know what an argument is? You have a work email. Miss Gill, I appreciate you 
you trying to interact with me, but the rest of the class needs to interact too. What kind of argument? Do y'all understand me? Or y'all just not want to talk today? Can you like say the question again? What kind of argument? I'm, I looked at the, I, I went down these percentages right here. 10%, 10%, 15%. Went down to 12, 25, went down to 22, get up to the upper middle class, which is 85,000 to 163, 24, and it was 28. Okay. Uh, and then when you get into the people that own the yachts and everything, you know, the people that have more money that they know what to do with, rich people considered rich. Not not Anderson County rich. In Anderson County, you rich if you make more than fifty thousand dollars, or you think you're rich. I'm talking about real rich. You know, people that actually own yachts and buildings and things like that. When they get up there, look, 32, 33, 35 against 35, and 39, 39.6, and 37. So where did most of the change happen from 2017 to 2020? Middle class, upper middle class, or the rich? Okay. Middle? Hey, Mr. Adams, I just saw your hair. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I, got, I, I, pressed, I pressed the wrong button. That's all right. That's okay. I, 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 just, <laughs> I just appreciate hearing it, your voice. Thank you. Is it, is it the middle class? The middle class? What, what happened to the middle class? Let's say the middle class is, is this bracket right here, this bracket, these two right here. What happened to the middle class? Uh, the first one, it went down 3%, and then the second one, it went down 4 So what can you say about the middle class between 2017 and 2020? Uh, uh, they paid less what? Money. They paid less what? What, what are we studying in 4 they paid less taxes. taxes. Good gosh, people, is that that difficult? And what happened to the super ultra rich people? Did they pay more or pay the same? I uh, did the, 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 pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. How many of you knew that if you were super rich, you paid 40%? Well, up to for now it's 37 percent how many of you knew that i guarantee you not many people knew that and how many of you knew that between 2017 and 2020 the tax brackets for the middle class actually went down what two to three percent how many of you knew that i hadn't no idea. You didn't? I didn't know any of this stuff. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I wonder why you didn't learn any of this stuff in, you know, your last three years of high school. Let's move on. Makes you think, don't it? For those people that are actually paying attention to class, I don't know if you're paying attention or not. I know one thing, next year, Mandatory. I mean, next semester, mandatory video. Mandatory. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so they should be giving us here a, okay, tax credits. Now, remember, a tax credit reduces your tax bill by the full amount of the credit. All right, 
that's at the end, right? You know, right after you get to taxable income. I would like for you to say a tax credit reduces your taxable income. I'll write that down. A tax credit reduces your taxable income. I'm sorry, no, that's not right. That's what a tax deduction does. A tax credit reduces what you owe Uncle Sam. That's what. That's the best way to put that. A tax credit reduces your total bill. In other words, your total bill, that's what you owe Uncle Sam. So a tax credit reduces what you owe Uncle Sam. A tax deduction reduces your taxable income. All right, let me, let me go back and show you something. Before you go into the bracket, this is the best way to show this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this or not. Okay, I'm gonna take my handy dandy whiteboard if I can get it to work. Draw y'all kind of a flow chart here. And I don't know if I'll be able to get this to work or not, but I'm gonna try. Before you go into, let me do a text. Before you use the brackets, this is called taxable income. And the taxable income is your gross income minus your taxes, meaning your taxes that come out of your paycheck, FICA, um, your insurance and benefits with your employment, uh, deductions, you know, whether you have one or two dependents, um, <clears throat> exemptions, and so on. Everybody got that? Okay, that's taxable income. What's your gross income minus everything that comes out of it? That is taxable income. All right. Over here, when you get through with the brackets, whatever year you're in, this is what you owe Uncle Sam. Result of brackets equals what you owe Uncle Sam. Now, y'all remember me telling y'all about owing money and if you owed me a thousand dollars and you gave me something that's worth two hundred dollars, then you owe me eight hundred dollars? You remember me telling you something like that? Yes. Well, this is where your tax credits come out. Tax credits come off of this number. So if I owe Uncle Sam $5,000 in taxes and I had solar panels on my house, then those solar panels are gonna come off of what I owe Uncle Sam. So if I owe $5,000 to Uncle Sam, and I got solar panel credit of $1,000, solar panel credit of $100, then now I owe Uncle Sam 
got a thousand for easy math. Let's say I've got two or three credits for electric car and solar panels or whatever. Now I owe Uncle Sam $4,000. So the tax credit comes off of the back end of the brackets. And I gotta go because it's almost 10 o'clock. All right, now I want you to draw one more thing. I want you to draw a red arrow, I'm gonna use red. From here to there. And then from here to there. Exemptions and expenses come off of your taxable income. Then taxable income means you're going to run it through the what? You're going to run it through the brackets. When you get through running it through the brackets, that's what you owe Uncle Sam. And tax credits come off of what you owe Uncle Sam. Everybody understand? In other words, what you owe Uncle Sam, that's what you write a check for, and you put it in the bank, and you send it to the IRS if you need to. But you got to subtract your check stub information from what you owe Uncle Sam. If I owe Uncle Sam $4,000 now, and my check stubs is $6,000, then my check stubs, then Uncle Sam owes me a check for $2,000. If my check stubs information come up to be $3,000, then I owe Uncle Sam $1,000. And that's the second part. That's the next part we're going to talk about, uh, which will be after Wednesday, it'll be Friday. Okay? Questions, gripe, complaint. Did you learn anything today? Tell me something you learned. Something? That after a period of time, um, taxes started to become less. Well, during this period, 2017 to 2020. Yes. What else did somebody learn today? Anybody learn anything else? Okay, people, y'all are going to have to start working on communication. This is really ridiculous. This is, Miss P Miss Holder, you let me down today. What's up with you? I'm just really, really tired. I'm sorry. Well, Miss, Miss Stewart's not here. Miss Holder is tired. And the rest of y'all just don't want to communicate. All right, y'all have a good day, and I'll see y'all Friday. Okay, everybody got that? I'll see y'all Friday. Yes, sir. Have a good All day. All right, y'all have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.